Christ, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to gather, Lord, in your name, Lord, that we know that you're in the presence right now, Lord, and that you just, may all the words that my brother Carlton speaks be everything you want him to speak, Lord. I pray that you give him more than what he's already prepared, Lord. I, we know that that you have just the, the people you want here tonight, Lord. So I pray that as the word goes forth, Lord, the heart of stone just be, pro, be removed and you put a heart of flesh, Lord, to openly receive this word, Lord. May it be a light unto our feet as this is our midweek service to get through the rest of the week, Lord. And may it just edify us, Lord. May whatever each and every person may be going through, Lord, may they just get a release tonight, Lord. May they just get a revelation because we know that it takes one revelation to change the situation, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Lord, may my brother just decrease, maybe in all the words that you speak through him, Lord, and that it go forth and produce the fruit, Lord. We come against the enemy, Lord. Not a seed that goes forth will be stolen, Lord. May the, may the word that goes forth right now as the worship went forth, it tilled the ground for that seed to plant into fertile soil, Lord, and to come and produce good fruit and to stay produced, to, 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 to make and magnify the kingdom and spread the gospel, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We never forsake the, the, the assembly of ourselves, Lord. We thank you for each and every person that was able to make it here tonight, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that, that you continue to pour your spirit upon them and bless them, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we said amen, my brother Carlton. And let you... Be in expectation. You know, Brother Dustin got something for y'all. <laughs> Amen. How y'all doing tonight? Ah, that's awesome. Woo. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I, uh, I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, the topic tonight is going to be on growth and growing. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's a lot of things that we can, we can talk about, but one of the most important things in the Christian faith is for us to grow. It's one thing to be born again, but once you're born again, there's another phase of that. You have to grow and develop in order to become, why, become what you were born again for. You understand what I'm saying? Praise be to God. I, uh, Pastor Andy has been talking about growing and growth, and, and God laid it on my heart to keep going. You know, let's, let's, let's keep that thing a trend because it is important for us as believers to continually, to consistently grow. And, and they're in Atlanta right now, so they're, they're on the mission field. They, they're, they're, they're doing the work. They're out there making it happen right now to, to win souls for the kingdom of God. So right now, as a body of believers, let's keep our, our, our pastor and, and uh, Brother Burke, keep them lifted up in prayer. Let's, 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 let's just pray for them while they're out there, because those highways, I travel those highways a lot, they're dangerous. So we're going to pray and believe God to cover them and God use them uh, where they at. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Pastor Andy. Thank you for Burke, Lord. Thank you for the work that you place within them to do. We pray, Lord God, that you would use them mightily in the ATL, and God, that you would bless whoever come in contact with them abundantly, Lord God. And as they travel here and there, Lord God, on those dangerous highways, we're trusting you to cover and protect them, Lord God. And, and Lord God, use them. Give them the wisdom that only you can give, Lord God, to cause them to see the things that they need to see when they need to see it. And God will be careful to give you the glory as we trust you with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Growing, growing, growing. Why is it necessary? Why is growing necessary in our walk and our relationship with God? It's necessary because we want to grow to be, we want to develop to be uh, the maximum potential of what God created us to be, correct? Amen. I want to read a couple of scriptures that talks a little bit about growing, and then I want to share a few things. I'm not going to be before you long, but I just want to give us some very important and significant truths on growing. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to Proverbs 1.5. And you have it say, good God Almighty. All right. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 1.5, let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. Let the wise, those who are wise, those who want to use knowledge right, let them increase in learning, grow in learning, add to the knowledge that you have. Increase in learning. And the one who understands, obtain 
guidance. There's another passage that says, in all our getting, get understanding. Everything that we learn, we need to understand what we learn so that we can effectively apply it. Amen? Proverbs 12, 1. It says, whoever... I'm going to go ahead and read. I ain't give y'all time to get there, did it? <laughs> if you want to get there, go ahead. I'm going to give you a little time to get there. I just got a couple of them I want to read. Uh, just for the sake of reading the word and making sure that we're, we're, we're speaking the word and not my opinion. Because my opinion don't amount to a hill of beans. But it's what God says that makes the difference. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 12, 1. says, whoever... Now, I kind of like this one because the passage is blunt, blunt. It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Whoever loves discipline, whoever loves to be disciplined, discipline simply means corrected to do what's right. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof or he who hates uh, discipline, he who hates correction is stupid. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> and that's what the scripture says. I say, well, you can't get any blunter than that. Amen. I mean, I don't want to be stupid, right? And the Bible teaches us how not to be Stupid, right? Let me read that again. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. I mean, that's what the scriptures say. No, I mean, no, no shade about it. No black and white. Just straight cutting, cutting, cutting show right there. Yeah. So I love. I want to love for some. Grow to love with discipline. Grow to love wisdom. Amen. Yeah, because I don't want to be stupid. Colossians three twenty three twenty four. This is one of my favorites right here. And all of these scriptures are, are, are definitely aiming and pointing to growing because all of us should have a desire to grow. All of us should have a desire to develop, to be the maximum of what God intends for us to be. It's not enough to have 50%. It's not enough to have 75%. God expects us to have, he wants us to, to have the maximum of what he created us to be. He wants us to be a full potential. I remember Paul made the statement. He said, I have finished my course. I finished my course, so I want to finish my course, and I want you to finish your course. But the only way we're going to finish our course is if we increase in learning and apply what we learn with an understanding. Amen? Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Amen. When you have it, say, good God Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It says, whatever you do, work it all with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for human authority, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord, Christ, you are serving. Whatever we do, and it's a good mind frame to have, whatever we do, regardless of what it is, whether we're at work and, and, and we, we got uh, people that are depending on us to produce, we, we don't want to half step. We don't want to be lazy about it because our character is reflected in the things that we do when we work. When we're talking to people uh, uh, on, on our job, when we, the personality that we reflect, we want them to see the God in us. You know, we don't want them to see us. We want them to see the God in us so that they can make a difference. And they can know one thing, that, hey, look, it's something different. It's something special about that person uh, because their personality is, uh, is, is, is unique, you know. And the Bible says that we are a peculiar people. A holy generation. I mean, there's something different about us because our character should reflect the character of God. Now, I know we missed the mark here and there, but we get, thank God, the song that was on earlier said that God is faithful. It talks about the faithfulness of God. And the scripture in 1 John 1 9 says that when we confess our fault before God, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Boy, I like the fact that God's faithful. You know, because sometimes I can miss the mark. You know, sometimes my friends can miss the mark. But the Bible says that God is faithful. He never misses the mark. He's always there for us, to come through for us. Sunday after church, I got an opportunity to go to prison for the first time to visit. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I got an opportunity to go back into the prisons for the first time since COVID. And... It was a special, special time for me. Many of you know my, my, my testimony. I'll be doing 10 years when I was 18 years old to 28 years old in prison. And I found, uh, my, I say I found, I, I committed my life to God on the inside of prison. My relationship with God started on the inside of prison. And I did the 10 years and I came home and I've been home now for 19 years because God is faithful. Amen. 
And so it was special to go in there and speak with those guys this Sunday. The going in there and, and talking with those guys and seeing their hunger, seeing their desire uh, to hear the word, to get the word, and the fact that people came in to show the love of God to them, it, it reminded me. It reminded me when I was there. It, it reminded me of the hunger that I had to learn and to grow. It reminded me of the desire that I had to no longer to go back to prison. That's why I've been out for 19 years. Because I wanted, and I, we talked about that this Sunday, I wanted to obliviate, obliterate. I, would, I know I'm messing that word up, but I wanted to annihilate. I wanted to destroy that myth about jailhouse religion. And of course, there is a lot of people that go in and they get into jailhouse religion. I guess you could say they get in the Bible and then they got a lot of people hoping and believing for them. And when they come back out, they go right back in. Well, I was in there for 10 years and I saw it. I saw it happening over and over again. Then you had that occasional one that would stay out and do good and come back as a testimony or share a testimony. You hear some great things. But then it was a lot of them that had good intentions, that had good uh, desires. And when they would go out, they'd come right back in. So I, I, you know, I, I prayed a lot. And I prayed to God with a serious, intense question. I wanted to know. I'm glad that because we have a relationship with God that we can talk to God and God speaks back to us, whether it's through circumstances, whether it's through people, or whether it's through a still small voice in our prayer time. And so I prayed to God. I wanted to know because I didn't want to be one of those ones that went out and came back in because it looked bad. When you come back in, you've been in here all this time, and then you go out there, and then next thing you know, you come back in and make it seem like none of it was true. And so I go, why? Why, why could they have so many good intentions, lay it out, well, plan, great. Why could they do that? And, and so many people hope for them, and then they go out and they come back. What, what's the reason? I mean, they're smart. They're intelligent. They're not dumb. They're smart and intelligent. They showed that. They displayed it while they were on the inside of here. And God spoke to me. He showed me something. He said, look around you. This TV room was in front of me. Big old color TV on it in there. Everybody was in there having a lot of good time. They didn't have to pay for that cable that they was watching. Lights, they didn't have to pay for that. At a bed, they didn't have to pay for that. They had three meals a day that they didn't have to pay for. And so when they got back out with all the good intentions and all the good plans, all of those responsibilities that they didn't have while they were on the inside, it dropped back on them when they were on the outside. And so when it got tough, when the pressure came on, they reverted back to what they were familiar with. Instead of continuing to trust God to be faithful, they became complacent with the environment. I said, God, never allow me to become complacent to this environment. I know you have a purpose for my life, and I want to carry out that purpose. And when I came home, I hit the ground running because I wanted to see where that purpose was at. I made some mistakes trying to find out where that purpose was at. But as I did, and I trusted God, and I stayed in the Bible, and I stayed praying, praying. Praying, stay praying. When you don't know, when you do stuff and you make mistakes, stay praying. God knows we're going to make mistakes. God knows we're going to uh, get in error and, and different things. That's why he tells us he's faithful. He's there. Any kid that you <laughs> have no many of us got kids, and you know them kids make mistakes. They're not bad kids. They're not bad people. They're kids that make mistakes, but they're learning and they're growing. And so we have to be parents to, as they make mistakes, as they mess up. We have to show them how uh, to get it right lovingly. We have to show them how to uh, develop to the point of learning how to do it tactfully. And that's our responsibility before God and to our kids. It's a growing process. If the caterpillar just became content in being a caterpillar, and say, you know what, and, and a lot of people say this, and I hear this a lot, you know, I ain't going to never change. I'm going to always be the same because that's just who I am. If the caterpillar had that mindset, the caterpillar would never discover the ability that it has within it because the ability is within the caterpillar to fly like a butterfly. But if the caterpillar become content in saying, I'm just cool, being me, rolling around on this ground just as slow as I can. I, I'm okay. Ain't nothing wrong, right? I'm okay. He'll never become or get the opportunity to develop 
to become that beautiful butterfly that so many people love seeing and watching and observing, flying to new heights. The same way it is with us, with God. So much that God wants to do in our lives, within our caterpillar state. But we have to be willing to get within the cocoon of God and trust him to be faithful enough to enable us to develop our butterfly abilities. Amen. <laughs> that makes sense. Praise be to God. But it's important for us to understand the necessity to never lose sight of the importance of growing. Same way with a tadpole. The tadpole became content, swimming around with his self in the, in the little muddy areas. That's all he's going to ever experience, muddy waters. But if he say, I'm content with just being a tadpole, he'll never, his, he'll never develop his ability to hop around like a frog and chill out on a lily pad. <laughs> We have to want to grow. We have to desire to grow. And with this walk in our relationship with God, there's so many heights that God wants to take us to, and wants to, so many things that God wants to do within our life. But we have to desire to grow. We have to seek him for how to materialize what he has on the inside of us. He's the manufacturer. We're the creation, but he created us with a unique ability, and that ability is to represent him on the earth. The Bible says God created man, kind, meaning man and woman, <laughs> amen, in his image after his likeness. It was a time where I got stuck on that. He created us in his image after his You want to know how God looks? Look within yourself. That person that's on the inside of you looking outside at me, that spirit that's on the inside of you, that's why the scripture says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God wants to come in contact with the person on the inside of us that looks like him. Because that's who he created us to be. We're his children. The image of children looks like their parents, right? God is our father. And we should represent him in the earth because he is who he is. But we have to grow and develop to be who we are in him. By your heads. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you sent forth your word to produce the fruit that only you can produce. And we pray that the seed fell on good ground. Help us, Lord God, to have an increased desire to grow more and more each day to be like you. So that when people see us, God, they will see a representation of you. They will understand, Lord God, that the nature of the character, the love that only you are able to produce, lives, rules, and resides on the inside of us. Give us the strength, Lord God, to overcome the different obstacles that's in our way. Help us to create abilities, avenues, to be able to overcome. You've given us the ability to create because you are the creator, and we're created like you. Show us how to tap into it, Lord God and allow it to manifest within our lives. And God, we'll be so careful to give you the glory. We come up against every demonic force or strategy that the enemy would try to use to keep anyone down or discouraged or hopeless in this service, God. And we loose your spirit, Lord God, to release their minds, to give the joy that only you can give, God, and to produce a comfort that can only come from you. And we'll be careful to give you the glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Like I said, I didn't have a long uh, word for tonight. But go in peace. Be blessed. 
And I do keep me in prayer on my book is supposed to be releasing uh, before March the 1st, Vision in the Wilderness. So keep that in prayer. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm excited about it. I'm excited. It's my first book. And uh, it's just.